Well, I have to confess it's taken me far too long to get started on unboxing the H55 motherboards that are available to me, but I'm gonna get started today. We've got the H55M S2H. This is a gigabyte board. It has their three-year standard warranty as well as a host of other features. Now, this is an LGA 1156 board, okay? Supports Core i5 and Core i3. Has an H55 chipset, blah, 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 HDMI, DVI. Now, what's interesting about those two things is that they only work if you're using a Core i3 or a Core i5 dual core as of the time of filming this. So even though you've actually got support for the Core i5 quad cores as well as the Core i7 quad cores on LGA 1156, you cannot use the onboard video if you're using one of those processors. So the reason for that is that the onboard video is actually on the CPU. It is not on the motherboard chipset. So. This is a fairly low-end board. We're going to get started here. We've got a user's manual inside, Windows 7 support. Awesome. Good to see. All right. Then you've got your uh, your driver installation DVD. Now, this is very strange. They've got, like, features on here that this board totally doesn't have, which threw me off when I first opened this. It does not have their 333 onboard acceleration. It does not have Ultra Durable 3. Okay. That's... Like a very strange thing. Anyway, don't use that DVD. Download the latest drivers off the Gigabyte website. So then you've got your Smart 6, a smart way for PC system management. It's got a bunch of utilities and whatnot. Okay. Then you've got a multilingual installation guidebook. Okay. So a bunch of different languages. Shows you how to install a CPU, how to install RAM. Pretty good stuff. Okay. Then you have an IDE cable and two SATA cables. That is it for the cables included with this board. And then you have an IO shield. Okay. That was all. Not all that exciting. So let's get this board open. All right. So like I, no, actually I didn't say this. It's a micro ATX board. It's a fairly low end board. So you're not gonna find a lot of the high end features. Now the H55 is kind of like a cut down P55 in some ways. So it has all the same basic support. You've got support for the LGA 1156 socket. You've got support for dual channel DDR3. You've got support for PCI Express 16X times one. Now this board, see this is a PCI Express 8X port. You can see that it's Oh no, this is a 4X port. It's an 8X port with four. Okay, so this is not a Crossfire ready board, even though they've got a plastic 16X slot here. It's actually only wired for 4X. So you wouldn't get satisfactory Crossfire support, even though they do have a Crossfire logo here. So it will run, but if you're running any kind of decent high-end cards, it's not gonna get the best performance, mind you. If you're running Crossfire with decently high-end cards, why are you buying this board? Anyway, you've got your voltage regulators here. So the, no extra cooling nothing like that. All right, let's just have a look at what we do have on this board. Stop talking about what it doesn't have. We still got a floppy port, got a couple USB headers. There's your front panel connectors right there. You've got six SATA 2 ports. No SATA 3 ports are included with this board, okay, despite what it said on the uh, driver disc. The 24 port, the 24 pin power connectors on the right-hand edge of the board in its desired place along with an IDE port. And then up at the top of the board, you've got your four pin power. So this board does not have an eight pin power connector because I guess they figure you just don't need it with the kind of chips you should be putting in this board. You've only got two slots for DDR3, so that means you're gonna be limited to a practical maximum of eight gigs if you can afford four gig DIMMs at this time, which will likely go down in price, but it is gonna be a bit of a limitation for some users. Okay, then on the back, we've got a PS2, um, keyboard mouse combo port, I really like these. Then we have eight USB 2.0 ports, no USB 3.0 ports, and then we have three video outputs, one VGA, one DVI, and one HDMI. Please note, you cannot use these outputs. They are just dead connections unless you are running a Core i3 or a Core i5 dual core with integrated graphics on the CPU. Okay, then we've got onboard optical audio out, onboard gigabit LAN, and 7.1 audio. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Gigabyte GAH55M S2H.